Hi guys, Josh Lloyd here for your NBA DraftKings first look for Thursday across the league. Pretty small slate, only the three games on, but we're still going to dig into those games, talk about them, and try and help get you ready to uh, win some money here on DraftKings. So let's take a look. The first game is a rematch from Tuesday, the Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks. In Milwaukee, the spread and total is not out at this point for this game, and neither it is for the second game. But we do know that Kyle Lowry is questionable. Yuta Watanabe is also questionable, but Kyle Lowry is questionable. Drew Holiday is also out for the Bucks, but that is that Lowry situation is going to make a big difference. Now, we know the Raptors got OG Ananobi back last game, and they beat the Bucks. Lowry being out would change that calculus quite a bit. They'd have to push Aaron Baines most likely back into the starting lineup, shift everyone down a position after they went small and it was successful. So there, there is some uh, adjustments that will need to be made. I feel pretty dirty saying it, but I think someone like Bryn Forbes, who will start again for uh, Drew Holiday, has a level of value. He's at 3,700. He had 17 points last game. He had 17 points the game before that. There was a stinker of a six-pointer in there, but he had 19 points the game before that. And at 3,700, it's not bad in order to squeeze some other high-priced players in. And one of those high-priced players that you can squeeze in is, of course, Yanni Atatokounmpo, 10,900, averaging a whopping 71 points over the last three. He is one of the best options on the board, even with that high of a price tag. Middleton at 78 has been struggling, averaging just 27 points the last three. I wouldn't feel super comfortable there with him. I'd feel a bit better using someone like a Dante DiVincenzo at 5,400. But limited upside for DiVincenzo, more of a cash game player. Pascal Siakam is down at 7,600. Feels really low. He had 52 last game. He's averaging 44 over the last five. Anything under 8,000 there seems like a really good bargain price for Siakam. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. There's some good value to be had by using him. While Bob Portis at 51 also putting up some really good numbers at this point, uh, giving us almost 30 a game over his last three. He has some value. And Van Vliet at 79, yeah, that could even rise further, his value, if we do have Lowry's sideline. But he's been putting up some pretty good numbers, 53, 36, 32 in the last three games. 79 is not too expensive. I know those that Minnesota and Boston game aren't particularly good for Van Vliet, but look how badly he's shot in those games. That's why he's probably more suited to big GPPs, just because... Yeah, he has such variance in his shooting numbers, and he can have massive games, and he can have you know, terrible games. OJ Anobi is back. He's at $6,000. I don't feel particularly good about that, and I definitely don't feel good about 6400 for Norman Powell, unless Kyle Lowry does happen to be out. Let's go on to the next game. As I mentioned earlier, no spread or total out for this one. It is the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers, but one thing we do know is that Kevin Durant is out, and then Anthony Davis is out. Kyrie Irving is likely to return. He's probable. LeBron James is probable as well. Um, this one's an interesting one. We've got 4,900 for DeAndre Jordan. He's giving us over 20 a night. Um, is that is that enough? I'm not convinced. If, if Davis was playing... I'd feel a little bit better about Jordan just because of the all the bigs that the, the Lakers would roll out there, meaning more minutes, but I'm not 100% convinced here. I think there is some utility in him, but I'm not 100% convinced of it. LeBron's at 10,200. Looks pretty good to me. He's going to come out there. He's going to get 50, and he's not even going to worry about it. And then Kyrie is at 8,900. And I do like Irving at that price. He's averaging a cool 51 points over the last three. Uh, I, I think he's good for 45 at least, and that's all you really need from him. Well, James Harden's at 10-6. Harden's been putting up, honestly, fantastic numbers on this Brooklyn team of late, averaging, what, 68 over the last three and 61 over the last five. And he's under and he's under 11,000. Really, really some good numbers there for Harden. I actually really like him quite a bit here. The cheaper guys, I'm not as interested in. Uh, maybe Schroeder at 5,800 I could get behind. He's going to get a lot more usage with Davis out. But Harold, man, that scared me. Only 18 minutes last game. I know he put up 32 DraftKings points, which is fine. But if they're going to run Gasol 30 minutes and Harold 18, I do not trust Montrez Harold to put up 31 points in 18 minutes. So I'd fade him. Bruce Brown will probably start. Not interested. Gasol's at 4,000. Maybe Gasol at 4,000? He had 24 points last game. That's 6x value for Mark Gasol if they do decide to go that route of playing him more minutes, but I'm not fully into it. 6,000 for Joe Harris is too high, and Kyle Kuzma at 67 is just a ridiculous price. There's no way I'd want anything to do with, uh, with Kyle Kuzma at that sort of a salary. It's just way too high. Let's have a look now. 
at the next game, it is the Miami Heat. It's the last game of the day. The Miami Heat and the Sacramento Kings. The Heat on a back-to-back. They likely won't have Goran Dragic available for this one. They won't have Avery Bradley available for sure. And the Kings have got no Harrison Barnes and no Rashawn Holmes. Now, what they do in the starting lineup remains to be seen. Will they go with Bagley and Whiteside? Will they go with Bielitsa and Bagley? Will they go with Jeffries and Bagley? Will they go with Glenn Robinson and Bagley? Oh, there's a lot of question marks. But Hassan Whiteside is priced cheap enough that at 4600 I think I think he's got to be an option for us here. Look, it might not pan out for Whiteside. Easily, it might not pan out. But at that price, I, I think he's got to be in your calculations. I think you also have to look at Nemanja Bielitsa, who is probably going to be in the rotation. He's been in the rotation in the last couple of games anyway. And now Barnes is out on top of um, on top of Holmes. I, I think, look, he only had, well, sorry, he's been in the rotation most games. Only had five minutes last game, but 27, 28 the games before that. A 35 and 18 pointer. Uh, you would think he's going to have a pretty good chance of playing minutes in this one. Buddy Heald's at 6,600. I'm not particularly interested in that, but I do like Bam Adebayo at 8,200. He has a real opportunity to feast in this game. Bagley at 48 would be an interesting player as well, just because they've almost got no option, but to play him minutes, often they will bench him because he sucks at offense and defense. But they might just have to give him more minutes here, which gives him value. 6,000 for Tyrese Halliburton. He's been a bit quiet lately, and they're starting guys like Corey Joseph over him for some reason. I'm not particularly loving Halliburton there. I think there is some value in it, but you know, I wouldn't say it's the play of the day or anything like that. Well, Jimmy Butler has been playing at a really high level. He's at 8,800. He's all right, but I'd rather spend up for Harden and for Yanni uh, and for Kyrie than spend 88 on Jimmy Butler at this point. And I think 8,5 for De'Aaron Fox is also probably a little bit high. I'd consider Kendrick Nunn at 53, and I might consider Corey Joseph at 39. I think you've got to look at Joseph pretty hard, especially if they do start him, because last game he had 33 points in a start. Now, there was a lot of flukiness about it, but I still do think that he is worth uh, he's worth having a look at in this matchup just because of those injuries and the fact that they probably will go to him in that starting line. This one, this, I didn't mention, this game does have a spread out already, which is weird considering it's the only game that involves a team that is actually playing on Wednesday. The Heat are favored by one and a half in Sacramento, by, and the total here is 223.5 points. Guys, that will do it for today. Don't forget, before you leave, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop one of your comments down below so you never miss one of our episodes here on this channel. You can also find my channel, the Josh Lloyd Fantasy Basketball Channel. The link is in the description. The link is in the title as well. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.